Hey everyone, and welcome to a little bit of an addendum to um, the video already uh, posted for the week. So the global atmospheric circulation is super complicated, yet it can be rather simple to view. So like any model, and if you recall from week one, models are ways of taking something complicate it and simplifying it, making it easier to digest. Uh, the global circulation of the earth is super complicated. It is all physics and math, and it's not linear math either. So it's very complicated stuff. And so this circulation model that you see here, and I found this one online, gives you a very nice looking easy earth. You have the sun's rays, you have an earth that's tilted 23 and a half degrees from the vertical. And as a result of uh, circulation uh, issues like Coriolis and the pressure gradient, which are basically covered in the lesson, you get trade winds from the Northeast. In the Northern hemisphere, you get the Southeast trades in the Southern hemisphere. And when they merge, you have low pressure, rising air, you have cyclones. We covered that last week, week two, uh, where the air is sinking and spreading. You have air diverging away from one center place or high pressure. These are the horse latitudes or subtropical high pressure belts. And out of that, you have the westerlies. So in places like New York and Colorado and Illinois and Northern California, you find yourselves in the prevailing westerlies. Uh, at the very, very top and very, very southern part of the earth, you have the poles and high pressure there, and you have polar easterlies, which collide with the westerlies, creating another zone of low pressure. So in the end, you have high, low, high, low pressure, back to high, low, and high pressure again. So this is an idealized earth. This hardly ever looks exactly like this. Sometimes it approaches it. Sometimes it doesn't look like it at all. So I wanted to use the earth wind map to sort of show you where the earth does approach that. So here we have the northeast trade winds and see them. These are the trade winds right here. Notice they blow out of the north, northeast and northeast all the way from basically the western coast the northwestern coast of Africa, all the way to the Caribbean, okay? And these are the trade winds right here, that image. These are the southeast trade winds. Notice they're blowing across the southern Atlantic through the equator. And notice this doesn't happen at the equator. The merging here happens here. Where you see the little green dots, that is the intertropical convergence zone or the equatorial low pressure, the ITZZ. That's generally low pressure, and this is where hurricanes form. In 2020, Hurricane Laura formed right along here, okay? Now, if you take this all the way to the Pacific, you will note trade winds. These are the Northeast trade all the way from California, affecting Hawaii all the way to the Western Pacific, and these are the southeast trade winds, which converge right about here. And this is where you have lots of clouds and lots of rain. And sometimes you get little storms forming and creating hurricanes. There's none right now in the Pacific, in the East Pacific. But if you go out to the West, there's a big typhoon off the coast of Japan. And so that is the global circulation from the perspective of the ITZC in subtropical uh, high pressure. If you go back to the Atlantic Ocean and you see these high pressures around 30 degrees, well, guess what? There it is. It's called the Azorean or Bermuda High because it is generally close enough to the island of Bermuda, which is right there or the Azores, which belong to Portugal right there. Notice the anticyclonic flow, counterclockwise, okay? 
uh, I'm sorry, clockwise, <laughs> clockwise uh, around high pressure in the northern hemisphere. Now, go further north and notice westerly winds, westerly winds, generally westerly winds, south to west uh, across the United States. It's not really winter, obviously. It's not even fall yet when I'm type when I'm doing this. So the, the, the flow isn't as precise, but if you go over the Pacific Ocean, westerly winds, westerly winds, westerly winds, westerly, westerly, westerly. There's a component to the west. It could be northwest, it could be southwest, it could be due west, but there's a westerly component. And these storms, like for example, this big, big storm over uh, Alaska, this is called a mid-latitude cyclone. And it's a cyclone that forms when cold air comes in from the north and warm air comes up from the south. Okay, so these are different storms than the, um, what you find in the tropics. Uh, a hurricane, like the hurricane here in Japan or near Japan, is one big hot mass of air. So this is warm and humid all around. It doesn't matter where you are in the storm, it is warm and it is humid. If you look at a storm like the one over the Pacific, you have cold air coming out of the pole and you have warm air coming all the way down from the South Pacific. And this is your cold front right here, okay? Now let's look at the pole regions. Notice high pressure, polar easterlies. Here they are, see it? High pressure, these are the polar easterlies. So, you know, in this case, the model is actually pretty good. It's not idealized like what you see here. Now, you might say, well, we've been focusing on the Northern Hemisphere. What about the Southern Hemisphere? Well, that's fine, let's look at the Southern Hemisphere. And here you have westerlies. Westerlies, westerly winds moving from west to east. Westerly, westerly, uh, another west. The, there's this whole thing. If you look at it from the perspective of the South Pole, you have generally westerly winds surrounding Antarctica. If you go to the uh, center of uh, <clears throat> the continent, notice you have high pressure. And this high pressure is spinning in the different direction than, of course, what's happening in the Northern Hemisphere, right? So in the Northern Hemisphere, low spin counterclockwise and high pressure spins clockwise. That's reversed in the Southern Hemisphere. But regardless, low pressure air is cycling in or up, it's converging, and high pressure, the air is sinking and diverging uh, away. So this right here, let's focus it and center it on the, um, on the equator. And here you see again, the trade winds, the trade winds, the westerlies and the easterlies. And regardless of where you are, you, you tend to fall obviously in one of these uh, particular regions. Let's focus on the high pressure near 30 degrees latitude. What do you tend to find there? the Mojave Desert right here in California and Arizona, the Sonoran Desert of Mexico. You have, of course, the Sahara Desert in uh, Africa. And of course, you have in the 30 degrees south, you have the Namibia Desert in Namibia, Africa, right down here. Uh, of course, Australia, huge chunk of it is desert, 75% actually. So. This actually uh, sticks to what you would expect. It's not, again, ideal. And you can look at this image and from day to day it will change. But by and large, it will maintain some semblance of similarity to this idealized model that you see on the image on the right. Hopefully that gives you a better way of looking at the global circulation model. I know the, you know, reading it in the book makes it a little bit too idealized and in reality this is a lot more complicated but if you stick to what you should expect then trying to understand the differences from that normality 
is probably a little easier. Anyway, I hope that was useful. Uh, again, I hope you take advantage of this particular tool. It's really, really good. Uh, and it's in re near real time. So I hope you have a fantastic week. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.